Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's The Secret Show, episode number 285. And I'm Patricia Steer, and Mark Sargent, as always, joins me. Hello, Mark. Hello, Patricia. How are you? I'm really great. I am in a wonderful mood. I got a huge, check this out, care package in the mail. I'm not going to show the address of the person who sent it to oh, me. Oh, wow. It's big. It is like loaded with all sorts of like... Okay. Whoa. What <laughs> sort of what sort Box, of gift basket? I mean, is this? books and and cat toys, cat treats, drawings. Um, it's it's from my friend on Facebook who's a flat earther named Reed, and he's also an artist, and he's into a lot of interesting things. And he just put together with his mom, uh, who also is a flat earther and is a friend of mine on Facebook, a box full of things. He drew a cool picture. Which is me, I guess, in a dress I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, just a really pleasant, wrote a really nice long letter <laughs> to both of us. Um, just, you know, thanking us. And so, Henny and Reed, thank you very much. And I'll be messaging you later and going over everything that you sent. And the cats love the cat toys. Cool. Too much. They literally, they must have had catnip in them. They were pawing at the box before i even opened it so anyway right right so, it's a lovely a lovely way to start off uh, start off my day that's awesome yeah that's awesome. okay that's so all of us in the live chat anybody watching this at a later date might not apply to you but today is march 20th 2019 and this is the day that the big logan paul flat earth video is supposed to come out so we don't know what's going to happen. I have theories. I'm sure you've got theories. Those in the live chat have theories as to what this is going to, to feel like and look like. Right. So um, we don't know. Perhaps even during this show, it will drop. And I know those in the chat will let us know when it does. So, I, I'm yeah. wondering, there was somebody that, that messaged me this morning was wondering, uh, and by the way, forgive my head cold if I sound a little... I was going to say, I was so excited about my package, I forgot to uh, ask you. You do sound a bit stuffed up. I am a little stuffed up. I, I've been for a couple of days now, and I, but I have to power through it and do my stuff. Now, so. is it because you've got a cold? Because otherwise you look fine. Yeah, yeah, it's just a cold. Uh, probably stress-related. Allergies so. also? Nope, nope yeah. stress only. Mm, can we ask you what the stress is about? You and I have already talked about it. I know, but... But we can't really go into it. Publicly too, speak about it too much. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, no. Let's talk about. It. So yeah, if you guys are hearing me, it's like, what the hell's wrong with Mark's voice? Is the microphone working? Yes, it's working. <laughs> um, it's I'm on the mend though. So no worry. I'm taking lots of vitamin C. In fact, I have a cup of I'm not drinking wine this time. I'm having uh, fresh lemon juice. I love that. I'm so glad that's what you're drinking and not Nyquil or something. You probably no Nyquil is part of the time. twelve step program. <laughs> Exactly. Can't do that. Uh, no, let's talk about the Logan Paul thing because somebody yeah. mentioned to me that they thought that maybe he didn't finish it. Because yeah. as you know, this happens sometimes. People release trailers and then for whatever reason, although he did put the date, he put a hard in date the trailer. Mm -hmm. of the 20th in there. Uh, mm -hmm. However, and it was so, when I was watching the trailer and I don't know what your opinion was, I knew that he was going to have to, like any production, shoot things out of sequence. Right. So he shot all the stuff down in Denver, but then he, like with anything in Hollywood, uh, you have to fill in the plot gaps. And so it's like, okay, the narrative has to flow, but sometimes you have to shoot those after the fact. Mm -hmm. That's why you bring in actors for reshoots and, and little add-ons. And so whatever, and so some of the scenes that were in there that weren't Denver seemed a little forced. A little yeah, I know. A little staged. Yeah. It's I like, okay, fine, it. you, want to, you want to create a dramatic moment with your friend, that's fine. But if you shoot it from two different camera angles and put in a little music sting at the yeah. same time, it's like... Sorry, I have to move this box. The cats are like... Oh, no worries. Attacking. When cats attack. Oh, and Karen's saying I sound worse today than I did last night on the show. Yeah, I am worse today than I was yesterday. But I swear Do I'm on the men. Do you feel worse? Or is it that you sound worse? Because sometimes you can sound bad, but that's because... The mucus is leaving your body and it's, you know, you're um, getting better and feeling better. I'm, I'm optimistic. I see. So. You don't feel better. That's what you're trying to say. No, you're not really. That, that that's all right. I'll, 
I'll get there. You're more of a trooper than me. If I even have the slightest headache, I won't do a show or the slightest something. Well, I, I am I am one of those true believers of the show must go on. Mm -hmm. And so if you know if you're you got to go out, you got to go out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the way to that's the way to do it. Eh, anyway, so you guys are going to have to nuts. You guys got to bear with me. Sorry. Um anyway. Sorry for the cat noise. So um the uh, so Logan Paul thing hasn't dropped yet. It's the 20th, and now we're talking about, was it four or five, six o'clock Eastern time? Mm -hmm. Has not dropped yet. Uh, if anyone, by the way, sees it, uh, by all means, put it in the chat and let it let us know. Well, I don't he think is it. in California. It's only three in the afternoon, so he might be waiting until five or something in California time. Maybe. I mean, you could look and see what time he's, he drops his other videos. Oh, this is special, though, mm. for him. This we is something special anyway. And yeah, he worked I mean, on for him as time. well. I mean, I think he's made a big deal about this. But here's my take on what potentially could happen. And of course, I'm only guessing. I have no idea. Right. Number one, I don't really care. Flat Earth goes on regardless of what his documentary comes out with. Right. Because truth is truth. That's number one that underlines everything I'm about to say now. When I watched the trailer on his channel, I got the feeling because he interviewed a young person, a child, mm. that there could be an issue. And here's why. When he did the Suicide Forest video, and I, I'm not a Logan Paul follower, so I didn't know about the Suicide Forest video. I had a, after the conference in Denver, that's when I went back and looked at Suicide Forest video and all of that. I, I'm just not a Logan Paul fan or follower. I'm not in the demographic, and that's just not my kind of thing, even if I were the age of the people that he makes his videos for. Right. So um, I watched it and I thought, who is this young person he's interviewing about Flat Earth? And when it flashed to Logan Paul's face after he spoke with a young child, a boy, about Flat Earth, Logan Paul's face was very concerned that a child was talking about Flat Earth. Right. I'm thinking, hmm, after the Suicide Forest video, a lot of adults and a lot of parents and a lot of older viewers condemned him for being disrespectful to the body of the Japanese person in the suicide forest. Right. And maybe he is going to help burnish his reputation among older people and parents by taking a swipe at flat earth for hurting the minds of children. Mm. Gain back some of that credibility that he lost through the suicide forest. Yeah. So that is one way that he could go. And the way I am hoping that he goes is flat earth's interesting. Here are a couple of things I found out along my journey. I've been thinking about it. I don't know if it's true or not. Do your own research. That could be another way he takes it. I still don't think it's going to be a 100% punk because he would have done that at the conference and all this time that's elapsed. But he could have gone the route of the children, which wouldn't be heartfelt because Look at all the things he does that influence children potentially in a negative fashion. Oh, yeah. His, you know, his, that are the pranks that he pulls that are quite dangerous in some cases. His demographics are eighth graders for the most part. I, in fact, that kid he was talking to looked even younger than eighth grade. Mm -hmm. He looked like sixth grade. And I don't know where they found him. I don't know what school. But two things happened just because of the trailer. And I'm sure you watched some of the headlines. That, Did you, that, do you hear all this noise is happening here? No. Keep talking. But, I, but I, don't have, I don't have it turned up either. Okay, keep talking. It's Flynn is now digging into the box because there was catnip toys in there. And so I have to put the box somewhere where cats aren't. So put it in the bathroom right there. And that's exactly the, what I'm going to do. Bath the door. That's where okay. their litter box is. But do you want me to cover while you're doing this? You talk, but okay. I can still hear you because I'm right there. Okay, so two headlines were produced because of the trailer that Logan Paul did. Uh, the first was that, and you guys can read these if you want. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth Logan Paul and set the filter in Google. It's like one month. And it'll say that Logan Paul has now introduced a Wait, new... I don't know if filters are even working anymore, by the way. That's in YouTube, but we'll that. get to it. That's that's in YouTube. But at Google, the filters are working. So, we, which is weird because Google owns YouTube. So, anyway, uh, in Google, if you search the articles, just the news articles, we're not talking about YouTube... Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's a, se a series of headlines that say that Logan Paul has introduced a new demographic to Flat Earth, dot, dot, kids. And several other groups have picked up on it, that that Logan Paul is actually pushing the kids' side, which I thought was interesting because all he did was have one kid in a two-minute trailer, and even that kid was only in it for like 10, 15 seconds. 
The other thing, though, which was way more interesting, and I only found out that, about this yesterday, was that he briefly, and I don't know where he said this, and I gotta have, to, I don't know if it was in the trailer, but he hinted it was like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I can go to Antarctica and look, right? You know, look for for flat Earth. And somebody got that confused with another story, to where uh, it was the Forbes magazine story, which uh, Robbie Davidson was was tied to, and there was a British, one of the British documentary team people was kind of hinting at an Antarctica thing, to where now there are literally. Uh, got to be half a dozen stories out there saying flat earthers are going to Antarctica. Oh, like, it's like it's like it's a done deal. <laughs> and that's the same thing as the flat earth cruise, which is set to potentially happen in 2020 that Robbie David. Yes. On. Yeah. And, and people, people are confusing are saying, that. Confusing that. Yeah. We're the, saying, oh, yeah, the cruise going is going to Antarctica. To Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? No, I don't. There's not a lot of cruises that go from Florida to Antarctica, as far as I know. <laughs> Very few. Bring your suntan lotion and bring polar gear. <laughs> well, I mean, just just the trip alone would take forever to get from from Florida to Antarctica, mm. the Antarctic coastline. Anyway, so Logan Paul has generated a whole bunch of buzz just just with the trailer. He is, and and even the mainstream media uh, couldn't ignore him entirely. You know, most of them have blacklisted him because of the whole uh, suicide force thing. But there's the, some of the celebrity rags have picked up on it and said, "Oh yeah, Logan Paul." But they, but they don't. But a lot of them are buying it. They're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're saying, right. "Okay, they're, he's going to punk him, right? He's going to punk him." And I'm sorry, no offense to anybody out there, but if you include, I'm not making fun, but if you include a little person in your trailer in sort of a funny way, it's tough to take it seriously. You know Nicole what I mean? Cote's in the live chat and she writes, hi, by the way, Nicole, Logan just tweeted, quote, Logan Paul verified account at Logan Paul six minutes, six seconds ago. More finishing up final touches on the flat earth doc. I Holy knew it. Beep. I'm pumped for this to drop. T minus two hours. So, so why isn't it done now? Oh, well, you know, he, who knows, but he's probably just building up stuff so in two hours so at the time that we're recording now is um 6 20 p.m eastern so there you go i'll say he won't have i think they'll have yeah. it up by by nine eastern. so he's basically waiting for us to finish our show damn right he should be <laughs> yeah, since I will. i've gone into the live chat i'm just going to go in there and say hi to everyone hello to dolly daydream thanks for being here um, Walter William, hello to D-I-T-R-H, and yes, Nicole Cote, and uh, Joe Garcia, who put on QE 2019, which was a raving success. Joe, hello to you, and Michael Kirkpatrick, and Karen B, and Joe Mama, and Jelly B, and let me scroll. Oh, Paul on the plane is also here. Let's see. Sorry. Little problem. My scroll. Oh, I can rattle them off, too. You know, I've got a big chat. John jet. Pipkin, raised by gypsies. Cammy Aisley. Uh, Bob of Glowbusters, and we've got Lifting the Lid, and Arwen, hey, Gregory May, hello, and hey to Robbie D of Celebrate Truth, who we've decided we're going to do a show tomorrow on this channel, same time, 6 p.m. Eastern, Robbie and I, to discuss what went down with the Logan Paul right. documentary right. that's coming out in a couple hours from now, if it does. So if it doesn't, we're not going to we're not going to do the show tomorrow, but we'll see. Hello to Planular Botanist and Frederick Ducomé Bouquier, who says a big hello from Paris, France. I'm going to play it off like I said that name right because it sounded good, but I'm probably not saying it right at all. Hello to Nora, No One's Flower, and Stuart Little. Mike Frazier. Hey, D Marvel. Thanks for being here. And Brian Burton is here too. And let me scroll up just a little bit more and say hello to Cake Man and Oranda Children who says 99% of the people here are mods. Yeah, I make people mods. It's a way for me to say, hey, uh, how are you? Thanks for being here. <laughs> That's why you're a mod. Um, let's see, uh, somebody else I wanted to say hi to. Um, somebody else asking why there's so many mods. Because it's my channel and I'll do what I want. If you don't like it, you can go. <laughs> it's your party and you'll cry if you want to. Yeah, I'm not going to cry. They can cry. Uh, hello to Flat Earth Project and Fuzz Q. And who else? I'm uh, trying not to ignore anybody. I'm not purposely ever ignoring anybody. But, you know, uh, Gripton Krypton here as well. Dee Dee is here. Dee Dee Vaughn. She says, oh, my gosh, I've made it to a live show. This never happens. Yeah, because she's on a whole different time zone than we are. Uh, Roderick says, uh, hello. 
And uh, who else is in here? Suzette Ann. Hi, thanks for being here. I'm scrolling past names I've already mentioned. Hello to Gabe Ramirez, who says, hello, Mark. Hey, what about me? Oh, then he says, hello, Patricia. <laughs> the Jedi of Truth. Hello, thanks for being here. Ace McLeod. I think I might have mentioned Shout him. out Ace McLeod. Yeah, if you don't shout out Ace McLeod, he'll say shout out. Ace yeah, McLeod. it's good luck actually to say it now. It certainly is. Yeah. Um, Hoagie Tablers is here. Truth, Love, and Freedom says, I'm not a mod, but I'm here. And Fluffy Toke, William Kilmore, Shane Sheets, Cynical Skeptic, Diesel, who put an emoji of a wrench. All right, fair enough. Just Jack Flat Earth is here. Pseudo is here. And the Jedi of Truth. And Christopher is here. Whew, okay, we'll come back later. Hello, by the way, to Koala Gen. And Sudo is here too. Okay, I've got to just get out of the live chat. Or it'll just be me reading names out. And anybody watching it will be totally bored. Okay. Where did we leave off? Oh, right. So the Logan Paul thing in two Centered. hours. <laughs> Back to, yeah, Logan Paul. A couple hours from now. A couple hours from now. You guys will see it. Will it be cringeworthy? Either way, it'll well, generate... Well, it's Logan oh, Paul. It'll it, be cringeworthy and quote-unquote comedic, but probably none of our taste of comedy. He'll and, probably show the disc flying in space because that's what people do. He'll make some dumb remarks about flat earth that are non-scientific. That's what's going to happen. But it still could be positive where he comes out at the end saying, maybe it's flat, maybe it's not do your own research. And well, that if to he, me if would he, be a win. If he, if, he, if he does what he said he was going to do and imitate Shane Dawson, then yeah, that's what will happen. At the end, he'll end it the same way Shane did, which is like, you know, I don't know, man. Am I a flat? He'll, he'll be talking to his friend like Shane was talking to his brother. Right. Or they were saying, well, I don't know. Are we flat earthers? No, but there's something about it. So fine. That Either way, fine. the YouTube world will blow up. The, the, the good thing will be the secondary media explosion, which is every big YouTube channel that competes with Logan Paul will cover it because they'll see it as a, some sort of vulnerability. It's like if Logan's covering this, we are going to attack mm -hmm. and we'll go after him and critique the hell out of this documentary. Because as far as I know, he's never actually made a documentary, not a real one. And I don't even know if this is real. We don't even know how yeah. long it is. Well, he's got other people that were helping him put it together. Right. Um, you know, he's not like me or you making our own stuff on our own channels. Right. He's got people because right. obviously he's a multimillionaire and can hire whoever he wants to do whatever he wants. Um, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the trailer, according to Bill Keith, who just came in the live chat, has 1.6 million views so far. Just a trailer. So. Mm. Anyway, I would have thought I would have thought it would have been more for a channel too, with actually. 18 million subs, but that's just Bill, me. Bill, is that the latest update? 1.6 million. He'll check and come back because Bill's good with that kind of thing. Um, Oxbow Spirit says, my money is on childish comedy making flat earth the butt of a childish joke. Right. Um, Page 42 says, Mark's done his makeup really nicely tonight. <laughs> and actually, this is me trying to combat this cold by mm -hmm. going out in the sun. Oh, you know, your skin looks a little flushed. You're right about that. Yeah, I was I was in the sun for a couple of days. <laughs> hello to Paula, Bible literalist, and Anders Ace, too. I don't think I mentioned hello to you before or Awakened Mind. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, somebody in the chat said something about my eyeshadow being green. Yes, it is. Cool. Because why not? <laughs> why the hell not? Mm. So what do you want to talk about next? herpes in space because it's something we all need to worry about and i really fear for the astronauts aboard the iss i mean herpes more once you get that it's stored in your spine for the rest of your life and you'll have potentially sores on your genitals that'll be weeping and oozing and you won't be able to have space sex or they'll be on your lips it'll be disgusting right yeah and that's just a thing. <laughs> this is that, a thing that just happened now that's one of the new one of the newest stories, indeed, is astronauts are under attack by space. I, I take that with about as much salt as I take the uh, the aspirin story, which is after decades, they're now saying, oh, no, aspirin, a daily thing of aspirin, probably not the best thing for you. It's well, they used to say baby aspirin is good to prevent heart attacks to thin the blood. Yeah, and they're not saying that anymore. Well, here's something I do know hmm. that... If you are going to do anything at the doctor, like get a blood test or something, right. they say, or if you have a cut, they say, don't take aspirin because it thins your blood and wound healing will be less. And if you're getting a, you know, your blood panels done just to see how healthy you are, don't take aspirin either. I think aspirin might really actually literally thin your blood. I, 
That's what I've heard. I don't know. I don't take it. But it may not be good for you and prevent heart attacks. But I don't know. No. Hmm. Well, you know, also people who've been told by their doctor who've had one heart attack to take baby aspirin one a day to thin their blood, they end up, some of them anyway, having gastrointestinal issues. Their stomach gets eaten away by the aspirin and they get a sort of ulcer. It will go away, but their stomach becomes ulcerated and they get the pain of an ulcer. Really? So, yeah, not good. This is a medical show as well as a flat earth show and a makeup show sometimes too. Nice. Nice. Hey, by the <laughs> way, did it, did, so I got I got a couple of packages in the mail. Do you want me to oh, show those? But I need to talk about this herpes. What? Get the packages ready. I just want to add to it. Um, according to the New York Post and other outlets that covered the herpes in space thing, roughly 53% of astronauts on short-term space shuttle flights now show signs of herpes. Now, here's the thing about herpes. You get it from somebody else with herpes, either an active lesion, which is the general way it's passed, but also some people can have it, but it's hidden. You don't just, I mean, okay, I don't believe anybody's in space anyway, but let's pretend it's real. Right. You don't just go into space and due to the zero G or being in that confined area, just randomly catch herpes through proximity or zero G. It's just, it's so just another silly space, space story. That, that, as far as interesting space stories that stick with you, I could see that. Well, herpes sticks with you. Well, like luggage, <laughs> yes. Uh, but no, herp, it... As I've it, heard it called. The, the herp. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I mean, it's a good space story because... Space reinforcement story because it, it ties in sex. So the next time you hear about herpes, yes. you might remember it. I remember in the 80s, I think it might have been on Time Magazine or one of those very big magazines, Herpes right. was definitely talked about. Uh, it, it was like one of those things that, I'll try to see if I could find the cover, um, kind of like AIDS, that was the doom and gloom story that was being focused on, just like all the other bird flu, avian flu, pig flu, or whatever else. And it makes everybody go into fear mode. And the thing about herpes is, I don't really, as far as I know, know anybody who has it. No one's ever in a romantic, intimate relationship pulled me aside and said, Patricia, I love you and blah, 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 but I need to let you know that I have herpes. That's never happened to me. Um, well, there are people out there that have gone through that conversation. Oh, yeah. So and I guess I would have had to sleep with a whole lot more people for me to up the odds of having had that conversation. But right. what I'm saying is, it's not the every other person's got herpes that's active story right. that Time Magazine and other periodicals of the time were making it out to be. Hmm. And for those who have it, I'm not saying that, uh, haha, you've got it, I don't. My mom had a, a cold sore, you know, which is a form of herpes. And I remember when we were children, once in a while it would break out and she would always say, don't kiss me on the lips. And uh, neither my sister or brother or I ever did. And we never got it. So huh. yeah. it's not as scary as we've been told. Right. And if all the astronauts have it, isn't that interesting? Let's say those astronauts, some of them are probably single. They now have the scarlet letter H on them, every one of them. So they're back in the real world or out from under in the bunker where they live when they're supposedly in the ISS. So right. when they go out dating, hey, any potential mate will be a little bit worried because, well, I read about herpes in space and that all of you guys have it, or girls. Oh, I don't think dating that story is, I don't think they even care if that story gets traction. I think it's just a, it's a new wrinkle somebody came up with. It's like, hey, well, how can, what sort of space story are you going to do today? It's like, oh, no, let's do this. It's like, oh, okay. If I were an astronaut, I'd be a fake astronaut. I'd be mad. I'm like, come on. <laughs> They got other things to worry about besides their social life. Remember, they can't just go out and date anyone. This they the people they date are screened on, you know, they have to go you through could, a process. I would imagine that would be the case. I mean, I even screen the people I date in a way. I mean, don't we all these days? Because there's a lot of scary people out there. Maybe well, we do because we go well. through a whole process and <laughs> no. they but follow them, not. they tap their phones, their emails. I used to just be secret blood test. <laughs> I used to just be very open, and but I'm a little more protective now after a certain incident happens to me. Right. Um, anyway, so space herpes. Be space afraid. herpes. Be afraid. Very afraid. 
<laughs> well, if 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 space is a real thing, I would be afraid. And come on, it's a silly story. What? Because zero G again, zero G activates it. Please. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Aranda children in the live chat says they get back to you from space and you you go, you know, back to your marriage and you're like, um, honey, just letting you know I've got space herpes now. <laughs> Yeah, is it, and is it a different strain than normal herpes? Is it actually space herpes? I know there's simplex one and simplex two. Bill Keith says a friend's wife had lip cold sores and spread it to her husband's genitalia. I guess that, that can happen. happen. Yeah, that absolutely can happen. Yeah. Somebody told me the other day we were talking about the Bible and sex, and how sodomy is. He might even be in our chat. That sodomy. Why were we talking about sodomy? I have no idea. It's nothing I'm talking about or ever doing. Oh, but, please do go on, Patricia. Yeah, you go on and talk about her, sodomy. Yes, yes. I want to hear this. <laughs> he said that it's um, that oral sex is in the Bible is sodomy. Sodomy as well, as well as like anal sex. Oral sex is considered sodomy. Why? I don't know. That's what he told me. Like it's a generic catch-all term? Yeah, it's Farley. Um, Farley Ferrara. That anything Ferrara. anything that's not straight up sex, heterosexual. Well, and I'm not sure if that's actually in the Bible or not, but he was mentioning it. We, we need clarification on that. It. I have never heard that before. I think that's too generic. So Paula says the Bible doesn't define it that way. And with her channel name being Bible Literalist, she would know. So I don't know where Farley got that idea from, but you know there's all sorts of things. But Josh from Oregon says that he thinks it's legally considered sodomy. Okay, so maybe it's legally. <laughs> D Marble just yeah, wrote. I just saw D Marble's comment. D Marble wrote, Patricia mentioned sodomy. Trolls immediately begin recording. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> oh well. Oh, okay. Here's the sound bite. Yes, Patricia, tell me more about sodomy. Oh God. There you go. You brought it up, not me. I know, but I'm only bringing it up because it has something to do with talking well, to a flat a, earther. <laughs> here's a nice little segue. Did you catch out the uh, the high school that I did the presentation Wait, for? Wait, don't bring recently? up sodomy in high school, please. What? Wait. <laughs> or, just... or herpes. <laughs> so that was that yesterday? God, I, can't I think it was yesterday. So they woke me up at freaking 4.30 in the morning because it was East Coast. Yes. And what had happened was it was a teacher. And I wish I would have recorded it, but it was Google Hangout. and They didn't do it live. So they didn't record it. Uh, it was a teacher who had shown the class the behind the curve and then had them come up with an hour's worth of questions. Oh my gosh, they showed behind the curve in a class? Yeah, in a class at, at, at a high school. That's never anything I would have expected. I know, right? It was but is that because it's an anti-Flat Earth movie, in my opinion? It's not even a documentary. It's well, I would have thought so too, except that eight of those kids were wearing a custom-made black with blue lettering we are mark sergeant shirts with the with the ae map on them i know right <laughs> how's that for weird so like every other kid that was walking up to the camera because they all just sit in front of the camera so i'm on the big screen behind behind the laptop and so all the class is watching me on the big screen and they're coming up and every other kid that was coming up was wearing one of these shirts and i couldn't see the lettering really well i go what's what is that and they go oh it's we are mark sergeant i go where'd you get that because it was it was a different color, it was teal on black, and it wasn't easy to see. And they said, "Oh yeah, we have them custom made." It's like right on, good for you. And their questions were good, you know the the same sort of stuff we've heard for quite a while. But yeah, and the teacher thanked me, and um, the, uh, there were some personal questions they asked me about you uh, after afterwards. But I'll, I'll really, it. yeah. Well, because the document, you know, the Can documentary. You tell me now? Or like, are you guys really a couple? Was it that kind of question? Yeah, it was, it was going down that line Aww. sort of thing. Because because I've heard this in different film festivals mm -hmm. where people are asking. It's like, it's, because they hype up that, mm -hmm. that angle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Mm. It's like, well, if I beat her regularly, does that oh, mean gosh. it's oh. sort of a. <laughs> the topics we've discussed so far. Beating women. <laughs> domestic <Sodomy> abuse. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, and right, here, no. Okay, here's here's the here's the soundbite. Keep my pimp hands strong. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. So no, it was fun. It was really it was it was a good time, and I wish I would have recorded it. But then in hindsight, I thought since all the kids were on camera, maybe it probably it, the video I don't think I could have used. The audio I think I could have because no one would have known it was. Uh, and they didn't say their names when they walked up to camera, but it was fun. 
That is cool. And yeah. I would imagine that there will be some parents who weren't happy with that. Um, I'm sure that they knew their children were wearing those shirts, but they might not. The what the the parents whose children weren't wearing those shirts. It might. It might this might create some drama. It Unt might make it to the news, which could get flat earth spread. Uh, but see, here's yeah. the thing: until the parents are told by the mainstream media that's a bad thing, until the media vilifies us, and by that I mean me. You mean any more than they already have? Well, I mean, really go after us. No, no, I'm waiting. It's it's coming. I, I can I can feel it already, which is the, because they've mentioned kids too many times over the over the last yeah, month. And that's the thing. Like I said, I'm worried about Logan Paul taking that way to, way down the road that the kids, the children and, uh, you know, yeah. trying to regain positive vibes among parents and older people and for but, his channel but i've done a bunch of high schools recently and the Which reason that I, is mind blowing i'm sorry it's just crazy. i know and, and well they, they told me i asked him it's like okay why are you guys calling me anyway do you know what it was because i'm approachable yeah you are sort of a pied piper type of thing yeah oh, wait didn't the pied piper leave lead children oh you don't have to worry about that part In of the, the story. story no 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 it's it's good <laughs> the, but the point is <laughs> Oh, Cammy says, save the children from truth. <laughs> exactly. No, no. The sound bite that I am going to use is you don't have to worry about the children. We already have them. Yeah. And if this Logan Paul thing even is neutral, we get more children. Yeah. Again, you you know my little my little speech, which is look, flat Earth doesn't care about race or gender or religious preference, and it certainly doesn't care about age. Yes. We're not targeting anybody. It's like a board game. One of those board games you see on the side, you know, fun for ages eight to eighty. That's what flat Earth is. And, and kids get it, and if you're older, you get it. Although I think kids get it earlier, which is why we skew younger now. I would love to find out what is the common theme running through all of us in the live chat or watching this at a later date who who call ourselves flat earthers or even if you don't call yourself one, you realize we don't live on a globe. A lot of people reject the term flat earth or a handful do. What is the common theme that caused us to wake up? Because we all know we've tried to tell other people, family members, friends, and strangers on the internet about it and given them tools where they can go look for themselves and do their own research. We've right. let them know about P900, P1000, laser tests, etc. But yet they refuse to look. They just mock. They laugh. And they just send you, I used to get sent Vsauce videos and, you know, etc. What's the difference between us and them? Because I consider all of us to be a, like a wide ranging group of people, like you said. I do, yeah, I don't, I, I haven't found a common thread. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you have to be open minded. Curious, open minded. But, but that c can stem from a lot of different things, not just your parenting or lack of parenting uh, or educational background or the friends you hang out with or what region you grew up with or your hobbies. I mean, there's all sorts of the, it's, it's a chemical blend yes. of circumstances that I've, n I have not found a common trait. I, I, you know, it's not like you and I have run into people. It's like, you know what? He reminds me just like this guy and this person and this person over here. No, it's, I don't know what it is. It's the mystery right now. It is. And we I've even said, I, I wonder if one night the flat earth fairy flew over all of our homes and put fairy dust in some of our eyes and other people's eyes. Didn't but get you, we're just going to throw out these sound bites and just let them. So, so the flat earth fairy <laughs> sprinkled flat earth dust on our eyes as. Well, you know well, what I'm can saying? We even, can, we, can we even give them a gender nowadays? <laughs> Why did I wake up yet? Maybe my neighbor didn't. They've got the internet too. I kind of treat it like. I sound like that kid from the movie. Uh, you remember that really old movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Oh, yes. <laughs> Richard Richard Dreyfus. Why did Richard Dreyfus wake up and all those people that ended up meeting at the base of Devil's Tower mm -hmm. from all different walks of life? In fact, the scientists that were there in the movie were trying to figure it out. It's like, what is the common thread between all these people? They couldn't, they didn't know. It was like they were, again, we'll throw out a soundbite, they were chosen. And I said that in the movie. I said, flat, I didn't find Flat Earth. Flat right. Earth found me. I, I, I believe in some way we all were chosen. Now, I don't mean that like we're the chosen people or anything at all involving that, I think that's actually beliefs, reserved by a particular group. You know, or a religious belief. What I mean is, is that I, I couldn't get out of it if I wanted to. I take right. breaks from time to time, but 
there's an itch that uh, there's something that draws me back in. And I think all of us feel that way. And I think all of us would just wish we could go back into the matrix, go back to sleep and forget about all of this. I even think that away about veganism. I could just be like a normal person and go to McDonald's or go eat a steak and not have to be. When is the last time you went to McDonald's? I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying No, seriously, no. When was the last time? uh, When I was a child, we'd go as a treat on a Saturday. So you haven't gone for decades? I was on a road trip and got a coffee through a drive through at McDonald's. That doesn't count. When's the last time you I actually got fries at a McDonald's? Okay, so you got a fries. Well, I was in the UK, but somebody else was driving, and that was their decision. So, yeah, it's not part of my life, and and some people enjoy it, whatever. But when it comes to veganism, because I know what I know about the animals, I could never do it again. I could never eat meat again or dairy or any of it. And because I know what I know about flat Earth, I could never just go back to the ball. And just go basically you, back to sleep again because you can't once even you know, if you wanted you know. to you right. couldn't go back which right. is why it flat earth keeps spreading the way it does because mm-hmm. even if you if, even if you said just screw flat earth there's no way you try to go back to the globe and by the time you, you look there you remember the whole reason you're in flat earth is because you tore down the globe yourself you literally tore it down with your own hands so there's just nothing but cardboard scraps over there when you're looking back it's like oh right well, can't go back there either. And so then you're stuck. It's like, okay, well, you have to stay in the flat. Earth. Nobody quits the agency. <laughs> exactly. And we're all in it. Um, F'd up world, that's E-F-T-U-P-W-O-R-L-D, channel name, in the live chat says, Jesus said, quote, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you and ordained you. And the astral thief in the channel says, excuse me, the astral thief in the chat says, it all started the day we were born. And maybe that is true. Maybe the path that we've been on, all of us, and all the things we've gone through in our life, both wonderful things and horrendous things, have all led us to the moment where we awaken to this. We still carry on as usual with the lives we had before, but now we have become something else. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. So can I can I do my mail packages? My thing? Oh yeah, I forgot. We got off on a super tangent there. Well, we do go off road from time to time. Uh, <laughs> later, we'll probably, we'll, later, we'll probably talk about the conferences coming up because there are a bunch, uh, and the summer is still wide open. And I hear there's going to be a documentary made during the summer by a UK guy um, from that um, Forbes magazine article. But we'll get into that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And I promise, guys, my voice will be better next week, or I'll be dead. One of the two. It's probably not pneumonia. So I got a big book first. First off, I get a big book. It's called uh, The Consciousness. There's a lot of things on this book. Uh, The True Message of the Mandela Effect Reality. You are a hologram. Reality is an illusion. Instruction manual. Who wrote that? That is written by... Oh, boy. Hang on. Who sent it to you? It is written by Tony... Oh, wow. Where the heck is he? Why doesn't he have it on the front? Tony Tony White. Anthony White. And he sent it to me. It's a big hardcover edition, and uh, I think he inscribed it. Looks interesting. Yep, people he inscribed will, it to me. Oh there gosh. are people who hate the the inscribed hologram it. thing, and I, I understand that. Well, he, there's a lot of flat Earth references in it, right? And uh, and I thought it was it was really cool. And I know there's some chessboard symbolism on here, I but know, I think people he did, hate that too. <laughs> I think he did that deliberately, uh, but it's uh, it's really cool. I haven't really dug into it yet because, as you know, I've been really really busy. But thank you, thank you for sending that. And if you guys want to check it out again, it's called uh, One Consciousness, The True Message of the Mandela Effect Reality. You are a hologram. Reality is an illusion. I, I don't know what to think about the Mandela Effect, although there are things the that are very compelling. <laughs> the Mandelta Effect. I think it's the Mandingo Effect. Um, the, the other one I got, the other package I got, was very festive. came in this sort of envelope, right? Lovely. Yeah, I thought so too, until I opened it. Uh-oh. And every once in a while, people will send me... Uh, it was a human skull. <laughs> well, no. Really? Come on. In this? Well, it was- so, no, it's a book. But it, but people will send me their books and say, hey, Mark, w- would you would you read my book and, and tell me what you think? And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. However, this one caught my eye. I've got to tell you. Okay, let's see. And it Where really, it it really, really spoke to me. Um, it is called... And here, I'll flash it up on the screen real fast. You guys want to take a screenshot of it. Uh, but I'll read it for you. Larger than life. It's called Larger Than Life, Defeating the Challenges of Your Giant Penis. 
and any other big problem by Mike Covern. This is seriously? It is. I, I think it's a little, for lack of a better term, tongue in cheek. Right. Uh, but it is, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the the, the, the text on the back is, is hilarious. Uh, I won't read it. But it, yeah, it goes into re repetitive, you know, the problems of, you know, dealing with the giant penis. And I don't know. By the way, for those wondering, it's a problem I would never understand since I don't have one. But if well, I it, did, spo it spoke to me. <laughs> it, it really did. Uh, and, and I thought, well, you know, should I read it or, you know, is this a life story type situation? No. Uh, no. What, here's, here's the thing. So the reason why I thought it was interesting is if you want to buy this book for any reason, I have not read it, obviously. Uh, but if you want to buy this book for any reason, here's why I thought it would be kind of, you know, for guys that want to, uh, po you know, be a kind of a posing poser thing. You keep this book just out of sight on your nightstand next to the bed. Mm -hmm. And when you invite or in your living room or whatever it is, and when people would walk by, they're like, wait, what? What? <laughs> what? So instead of, you know, your problem with alcoholism or your problem with drug addiction, it's your problem with your giant penis. So, yeah. So there goes our family friendly rating on this program out the window. Although, no, I think that's more really clinical for the book. We I could have said it in all sorts of different ways, but I didn't. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe. So thank you, Mark Covern, for sending me this. And uh, very. It's amusing. Tickled my funny bone, as it were. Hmm. Funny. Well, that's interesting. Yes. See, I get you get cat toys. I get this stuff. Yeah, this is true. And um, coins. Oh, where's my coin? Damn it. Let Let's see. Up. Oh, show that coin. Yeah. Hang on. Gregory May says, I don't need that book. I live that book. <laughs> uh, Paul on the Plane says, giant pianists. LOL. Chris Topher says, I have that book. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Um... All right. Celebrate Truth, by the way, Robbie just said, I put up the new promo teaser for FE 2019 in Dallas that so you can go watch it on his channel. Cool. Hello to Chris Van Maitre, by the way, who just joined us. Bill Keith says, herpes to giant penises, shaking my head. <laughs> oh, yeah. This this show Sorry. is, I don't even know if it's salvageable at this point. Yeah, I know. Might as well just close. I just pack it up. Good night, everybody. <laughs> um, hi to Paul Chesum and Markovsky and Lawrence Cade. Thanks for being here. D Marvel says he's just keeping his lips zipped when it comes to the topic of that book. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, people, I get weird. As you know, I've had my physical address in the description box of every single video that I make. And so I say, send, send whatever you want. Send me strange stuff. And people do send me strange stuff. The gift package that I got today that I showed at the start of this video had things I didn't even name in it. Nothing weird or strange or odd, but just... Right really well chosen little things and lots of little things and books. And it was really neat. So, so uh, the makers of PowerCoin, go PowerCoin. Uh, by the way, I love that name. I, I think it's it's so it's so um, retro United States marketing. It is. Yeah, PowerCoin. And where's the basically put, out of? The what? Where's PowerCoin based out of? Italy. Oh, Italy. Okay. Yeah, Italy. Uh, and so when they made this coin for me, uh, and I've got the prototype. I don't think anyone else got it yet because it's officially not even released until Are you May. Are bragging about the prototype? I am. I am bragging about this because because I really wanted it so I could actually show it to different journalists because they want a small thing to look at uh, in some cases, something what that they can... do you do, though, when someone says, Mark, that's not the model that a lot of us believe in. Some do, some don't. Um, you know, flat earthers who will say, well, that model doesn't work. What, what's your answer? I say there's a lot of disagreement in the model, but again, you got to give them something. I go, I go use this as a starting point because with this, here's, here's the reason why I like this. With this comes about a thousand questions, which is they stare at it for a little while and then they say, okay, how does this work or what about this? And through that, then it starts to evolve in their own head. Remember, before this, uh, the people would, I'd give them all sorts of variances, you know, planetarium, terrarium, snow globe. Remember that radio station guy that said pizza box? And right, go, and building, you say sometimes too. Building, structure, right. uh, because you kind of have to define it for people. I, I go, look, walls, a floor, a ceiling. And then it's like, oh, right, because you didn't think of that beforehand, if whatever. you even go outside right now and just right. look up, and look around you, it does seem that 
with the new eyes that we have that we are inside something oh yeah oh you you want to have fun again watch any star nighttime time lapse of of the of the sky next to the horizon mm -hmm. you watch any of those time lapses you you immediately see in rapid motion what our ancestors saw a long long time ago that which led is, them to believe that the sky is moving yeah the sky is us. moving because yeah. technically the sky is moving and only recently did they say no the sky is not moving that'd be a good youtube channel name the sky is moving Ooh, we should, get, we should get summer on that trademark <laughs> oh anyway so these guys are going to get me uh they asked me look we, we're going to do a cheaper version with just a stamp on it it's not going to be artistically painted you know it's not going to be hand painted like this thing uh and we want to do it with your signature and i said okay sure but you know what one of the first things they asked was they said on the back we were thinking of doing the um uh the exact date and destination points of that antarctica mission you guys are doing <laughs> it's like, oh my god and seriously like like again it's already a fact and i'm going and so i had to write him back i go look it's That's a the rumor i go i go to rumor from one article combined with a media celebrity wannabe that has now become media fact because it's been reproduced you know filtered through the grapevine and so i said no i go no there's not going to be a freaking expedition from I, and i just I mentioned i go look the antarctic life. I go, the Antarctic Treaty doesn't even, it, it, oh, it would take forever to, to, to go through the paperwork. I see the validity of having the AE map used in the way that you use it as a teaching tool. I know when I first got into Flat Earth, that's what I looked at. But it doesn't mean that because that's the teaching tool that that's where you end up. There are no. all sorts of other ways that you can look at the shape of the Earth, Martin Kenny, or an infinite plane, or whatever it is that floats your boat. Right. Um, and other people are coming up with other maps and models, which I don't think it's wrong to look at other maps and models. Uh, the the reasoning the reasoning why um, the, why I like showing people things like this is because it uh, if you don't you're basically you're giving them a concept and then you're you're saying okay look at that patch of fog over there mm -hmm. and imagine that being it and most people they just God bless them they just don't have it. They just, a lot of people don't have an imagination. No, they those they, who got in flat Earth pretty early in 2015 when your clues came out, um, and even some got into it before that. We, I think we were, we didn't have as many visual representations of what flat Earth could be, and we did right. have to use our imagination. And I was completely fine with not actually having a visual representation of what Earth looked like, right. because I saw the things that showed to me that it wasn't a globe. That was enough. Right. So whatever it turns out to be, if we ever actually are even allowed or able to figure it out and verify it, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Or if somebody can eventually disprove Flat Earth. Uh, I've, you, you've heard me I'd say I'd be fine with that too. It's like, great, bring it. Bring the truth. I go, I, and I wouldn't even be upset if you did it. Because like, fine, fantastic. Although every month that goes by, I, I have, have no hope of that. It's not, it's not going to happen. Look, it's been four years. If you haven't done it by now, if, if no one inside, because there's been a lot of people that have tried to address this thing. If you haven't done it by, by now, now, you'll never, ever, ever do Whatever. <laughs> Prove the globe. Whoa. Yeah, I know. I can't <laughs> sing even with a normal voice. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, so anyway, PowerCoin is doing that, and I can't wait to see it. It'll be kind of cool, but it, we've run into a little bit of a stumbling block because the Antarctic mission I had to shut it down immediately and it's like, no, no, it's not going to. In fact, I got an, I, somebody's got to put it in, in chat. It's the, it's the British guy that's going to do the, the kid that's going to do the TV. It's not even a documentary movie. It's a made for TV hour long special. I can't remember his name and I'm sure he'll commit it to memory eventually when he finally pulls the trigger on this thing. Um, because I'm sure he'll be at the UK conference. Now I talked to a guy today and did an interview with him, his name is Josh Crane, and he's from the UK. Right. And he is interviewing a number of flat earthers, uh, David Weiss. Um, gosh, I know the rest of them. Why am I blanking out? Um, anyway, it's a pathway documentary. He said so people can choose their own pathway, and he's asking all the people he's interviewing the same question, and then the viewer can pick. Oh, I want to hear. Um, this guy answered the question and then click on that guy. So, um, yeah, David Weiss, Dave Marsh, Gary John, Gary John Heather, and other people, and me in there too. So, cool. 
but that's not the one you're talking about. No. Okay. No, this is this is a different guy. In fact, you know what? I There's so many it. things that are happening. I know. Uh, it's Which the Forbes. Right. Hang on, I'll find it real fast. All it's right. Forbes. Forbes magazine. Um, yeah. In fact, for. Yeah. In fact, here's in fact a different guy. Even Forbes magazine. The people that wrote the freaking. Uh, oh no, Jim Dobson. He's. I think he's a good guy. Uh, he said, he said, now plan an Antarctica expedition to the edge of the world, right? And then they tie it to Logan Paul somehow loosely. And then they tie it to, who's this other kid? Oh, where is he? Jay, there he is. Jay DeCaspi. Hmm. D-E-C-A-S-B-Y. Will be starring in a television series about the subject. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Did it's anybody... a big article, too. Did anybody happen to catch uh, Surreal Talk, lineupmedia.fm today? Uh, Surreal Talk, they've got a pyramid with an eye on it, all seeing eye as their logo. And uh, their, their, their whole thing is cults, conspiracies, and the paranormal. And they talk with David Weiss today. So you can go check it out on the Surreal Talk YouTube channel. Three gentlemen on a panel and David Weiss. And of course, David Weiss, you know hit it out of the park as always and it was really enjoyable and there was a good live chat going on as well right when david weiss is in something i'm always saying to myself that's that's a fine choice i'm always hey, yeah did you i i got i referred solid. him to a group out of um uh new york new york city and mm -hmm. uh, it was a um i can't it was a big podcast and he was gonna he was gonna go down there and do it and then they they uh they pulled the plug on it Oh, really? Right after they organized it, I felt really bad. I don't know what happened. And they said, Some oh, higher up said flat earth. Nah, nah, that's what I thought, too. Know. I thought, OK, like like anything, some higher producer said, "Nah, we're not going to do that. But, well, there's a guy that I know. I'm not going to mention his name because he doesn't use his real name publicly, but he is a flat earther behind the scenes. And I met him in Canada at the conference last year. And he wrote me today and said for the past two years, he's been answering flat earth questions on Quora. Q U O R A dot com. Right. And he's got a profile, Mike Dash Moon. That's not his real name. But um, he said that maybe it's just a coincidence. But in the uh, past few months, he's noticed something strange. There used to be quite a few flat earthers answering questions asked on Quora. But lately, he says he feels he's the only one. He thinks maybe Quora is censoring now. So in the description box, oh, I hear you coughing. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's all right. We're good. We're good. All right. All right. Um, he says uh, that maybe Quora is censoring us now. So in the description box of this video, I put a link to Mike Moon's um, profile. And if you ever are of the mind, click on that and go to what he's posting and chime in and be supportive or, or help out with other people who potentially could be asking questions on Quora. Because... Any place flat earth being talked about is good. So if right. it's being censored in some way, we need to we need to get more, you know, men and women on board over to a certain area and uh, you know, get more flat earth stuff out there. So I that's agree. in the description box. So I'm looking through the headlines and I wanna I wanna rally these off real quick and show you what sort of grapevine has been happening over the last five days. As long as it's not about flat earth herpes, I'm in. It's not. No, in fact, it's weird. So initially, I don't even know where the, the, I think the first story came from Forbes, which was, yeah, flat earth supporters now plan an Antarctica expedition to the edge of the world, right? That was four days ago. Then all of a sudden, they started mixing the two because media doesn't pay attention. They don't do the research. It's like, we'll just grab everything. So uh, YouTube, Logan Paul is giving the flat earth conspiracy new life. Uh, controversial YouTube star brings flat earth conspiracy, conspiracy theory to a new audience, kids. Uh, they rehash, I don't know why they're bringing this back up. Remember the whole Nathan Thompson thing where he went after the NASA guy at Starbucks? I do remember that. That's Daily Express. Oh, crap. Uh, hang on. Random guy goes into Starbucks and starts yelling. Yeah, flat earth shock. How conspiracy, conspiracist confronted NASA employee over lies. They literally did this a day ago. It's like, wait, so 2017, you're you're not going to mention Nathan that it was in 2017? Thompson, since that time in his life, right. um, has, like, let's just say, grown a lot. We've all grown. I've grown. We've all got better at what we do um, at the way you need to 
conduct yourself and portray yourself and speak publicly because people get the wrong idea. Right. Um, I'm not saying that he wished he could undo that, but I don't really see him doing that kind of thing as much anymore. Right. Yeah. I, it's a random NASA employee in a Starbucks isn't really a liar and a cover up person. I mean, maybe no. they are, but generally they're just a person who turns a wrench or does paperwork or, you know, thinks they're doing a good thing. Sort of like, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a second. Well, actually, let's talk about it a little bit anyway. Um, I don't know if you, you didn't have to necessarily listen to it because it was a long interview. The, uh, the girl from Texas Tech, the, the PhD who wrote a paper who said, that basically said that YouTube was the fertile ground that was promoting flat earth. And then every media person out there grabbed it. It's like, YouTube is the reason why flat earth is happening. And it's like, really? It's, that's, it's such an, it's such a, it's too easy, but, but it caught a lot of traction, right? So after that Forbes article, real quick, fast, uh, in, uh, let me do it rapid fire here. Uh, Geek.com, Flat Earthers planning bizarre Antarctica trip to prove planet's shape. Uh, Courier Mail, Flat Earthers plan incredible trip to Antarctica. Bizarre to reach, or incredible, you decide. <laughs> exactly, to reach the end of the world. Um, uh, flat Earthers, the mirror, Flat Earthers travel to Antarctica to reach the end of the world. And then this is where they, they just went off the freaking rails. YouTube star Logan Paul to trek to Antarctica to prove the Earth is flat. That's the Daily Express. And then YouTube star Logan Paul uh, to tr uh, vows to prove Earth is flat by visiting Antarctica. And I almost guarantee that after this thing comes out in another two hours, they're going to tie this whole, they're going to tie it all in one big bow, oh, which is. Well, you know what you just read where brings new life into flat earth? Glaucoma yeah. says new life. It never died. Exactly. exactly. No, no. Briggs breathes new life into his career. Into yes. His career. In fact, oh. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what the article was talking about, where he oh. they were saying he's trying to, to ride this thing into. Yeah. I mean, Logan Paul had a little dip in popularity, kind of during the uh, suicide forest thing, but not really. I mean, he lost some subscribers, but because new people were being exposed to that, right. got more subs, just like any and, type of hit piece on in the flat earth community on another flat earther gets that person that's being the victim of the hit piece, more subscribers. And truthfully, and, and it's not me being callous, eighth graders wouldn't care. Oh yeah. Sort of thing. They'd be like, what? They have no concept of suicide anyway. I mean, for the most part, so they wouldn't get it or the whole cult. I mean, or hell, not to pick on eighth graders, but how many would even be able to point Japan out on a map? Right. Or the culture or anything regarding their traditions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ask them about video games or how to do certain cool things with a computer. They're down. Yeah. yeah ask them about Fortnite. Yeah. Um, game, in the moment. live chat, I know. In the live chat, Bill Keith goes back to what I was talking about with uh, Mike Moon and Quora. Link in description box. Uh, Bill says that he's still slogging it out there on Quora. He posted an article about the hidden unicorn slash Pegasus image he found in an Apollo Eight image. Hmm. So, um, yeah. Don't One of the uh, I had a skeptic from the the high school thing that I did yesterday. And the girl wrote me, I had four of those high schoolers write me separately after the class was over, which was very, very interesting. And one of the girls said, look, I'm a skeptic. I was wearing the red sweatshirt and I knew exactly who she was. And I sent her some links. I sent her one of Mike Helmick's things from the ISS. I sent her some of the um, satellites on balloons footage, different things. And then I sent her one of my favorite Apollo 12 shots. Not Apollo 11, but Apollo 12. And, you know, this beautiful stage shot. And I said, look, Take a take a take a stare at this this image here. I can find at least half a dozen things that are wrong. And she went through, granted, I mean, she's what, 17, maybe 18. Uh, she was she was going through denial. It's like, well, you know, I I don't really see how this proves, you know, a flat earth type thing. And I go, well, you gotta start somewhere. You gotta believe there are lies somewhere. And if if the Apollo if the moon missions are fake, you gotta ask why. And I think I got her on the right path. Good. I, we'll the uh, gateway drug of the moon missions. That's what did it for me with Astronauts Gone Wild by Bart Sabrell and Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. It got me thinking. Now there were things in there that didn't make sense because then in, in Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, they were talking about low Earth orbit. And as I got more and more into flat Earth, I'm like, well, there is no Earth orbit, like the, unless you're talking about flying in a spy plane above. 
Right. They're not, you know, out there in a capsule. So, but it, I mean, I'm not a scientific minded person and I was able to figure it out. And so I have faith in many more. Oh, I think you're a scientific following. mind. I think everybody's got that scientific mind. Remember the yeah, scientific logical method. Logical scientific mind. Yes. The, the scientific method is easy to understand, literally. And that is test, observe, repeat. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And we've been doing it our entire civilization. And that is you look at something, you say, hey, I wonder if I do this. And you'll see until until you finally come up with a consistent result. And then all of a sudden, magically, it becomes science. Once you once you've been able to repeat something that you were taking guesses on in the first place. You know what I mean? So you get a scientific mind. I, don't, I shouldn't don't sell sound yourself myself short. short. You're, I mean, I know I'm the eye candy and you're more of the voice. I'm the brains behind the operation. Yeah, yeah. But Certainly. look, I, th I think you have a lot of, a lot of science in you. Maybe you're not. <laughs> Thanks. Hello to Brian Stavely, who's in the live chat. Check out Brian's channel if you're into uh, Mandela. He is, and his channel is growing. And you know, you just showed ben a Delta. little earlier uh, that had that. Um, what else was I going to say? Somebody else mentioned, I got to scroll up. Hello to Flat Earth Vegans. Um, Alan Holman is here who says, hello, everyone. I rarely chat during the show, but I see some familiar usernames from other chats. Yep. We are legion. We are everywhere. I love going into a non-Flat Earth chat and find a Flat Earther there because my channel name, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, if somebody clicks on the Space Woman my face in it logo that I've got, they'll know I'm a flat earther. And I, I, I get once in a while, I'll get someone say flat earth. Yay. You know, so I, Paul on the plane, I totally get that drainage reference. One of my, uh, one of my favorite dramatic movies ever. There will be blood. Wait. Yeah. There will be blood. Hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. With, with, Somebody. uh, Daniel day Lewis. You ever seen that movie? Uh, there will be blood. No, where I he haven't. played, he played the oil tycoon in the early 1900s in oh. America. It was br brutal. He it was you know because he only does a movie every so many years. My Left Foot was the first film of his I ever saw. Daniel Day Lewis. He's done a lot of stuff. Oh, yes. He did some wonderful things. Yeah. Hello to Fishing for Truth and Mikey Smith, horizontally opposed, who says Flat Earth Mobile going to Vancouver on Saturday. He's got a vehicle that he's got done up in flat earthiness, which is cool. Uh, hello to Irk Childs as well, and Josh from Oregon too. So, yeah, and there's something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, I found this article, and it's so poorly written, I don't know who put this thing together. It's nobody with a scientific mind or any sort of mind at all, but I'm going to read it anyway. And I'm going to read it the way it was written. Or maybe I shouldn't, because somebody could take a soundbite and think that's the way I speak. What? Don't Science pull back now. Science and Future is the name of the, uh, the periodical. Science and Future. Came out Saturday, the 16th of March, 2019. Here's the headline. We learnt... It wrong. Researchers find that Mercury is even more closer to Earth than Venus. Yeah, not the best yeah, that's, the English that's... language, but I'm going to read it. A group of researchers simply exhibited something that may stun you. Mercury, not Venus, is the nearest planet to Earth by and large. The specialists introduced their outcomes this week in an article in the magazine Physics Today. They clarify that our techniques for computing which planet is the nearest misrepresents the issue and that's not all. Mercury, according to the article, is the nearest neighbor, all things considered, to every one of the other seven planets in the nearby planetary group. Our misguided judgments about the closest planets originates from the manner in which we, for the most part, gauge the separations to different planets. And then they go through all of this scientific jargon, which probably, if it has anything to do with the way that English was used to write the article, is absolutely worthless. So anyway. Yeah. More space programming, you know. Ooh. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, oh, that is, is a space reinforcement story. <laughs> yeah, you, like, oh, yeah, technically, the, 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 <laughs> you can always tell a nerd argument yes, because it or starts with the word actually or technically. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's like technically speaking, Mercury is closer by whatever. Well, actually, uh, it's simply not done to wear brown shoes with a blue suit. Yeah, that kind of person. Aren't you that kind of person? No. <laughs> yeah, but they, but they, but they do it with things like technically, you know, you should only. It's proper decorum to only go out to twenty decimal places in pi. There Whereas you, you would say technically, and then you would go into the three exceptions why you could wear white after Labor Day. Speaking of manners, you know when we toast with 
soft drinks or wine or champagne. Right. Supposedly, clinking glasses together is a faux pas. And if somebody wants to clink glasses and you know that it's not really the right thing to do, just hold your glass up and let them clink it to you. You don't clink to them. Right. And it goes back to most manners have something to do with trying to prevent bad things from happening. Right. Glasses smashing into each other and glass breaking. So clinking is frowned upon. But people do it. So, you know, it's interesting. Uh, and I get it. There's extremes to everything. I don't care how many lifetimes I live. High society just has way too many things. I mean, like, look, if you're society, people, you know, over if you're sitting at a meal, you're sitting at a dinner table with six utensils on each side. Mm -hmm. and you, you work really, from the exterior inward. Oh, I know. I know. But you have to follow those rules. You have to wait until, of course, you know, you can't just just haphazardly pick up this or this. And you've got to. I mean, like, well, look, you're eating. Well, you don't want to gross people out. I think that lots of manners go to that, not grossing people out or offending people where if you've got a hostess or host at the party, you wait for them to put their napkin on their lap and then you do. You watch them and do what they do because you don't want to make a spectacle of yourself. I mean, probably in our own home, some of us would pick up a plate and just lick right off of it. But in public society, it might no, be people nauseated and maybe manners are all about making the world a better looking place for everyone to live in who has the means to have a table and a table set, i'm of course i'm a big i and hey you're i'm here look i know you're <laughs> you're, way, you're way more about this than me and you have actually attended said said functions whereas i shy away from them because for me everything in moderation hmm. even Except moderation <laughs> everything in moderation even that even yeah. even high high levels of manners because at that point you're not enjoying the company anymore you're too worried about the rules and it's like well you, by that time you have memorized the rules i'm going yeah but there shouldn't be rules for certain things it's all about breaking you know breaking bread there you go sitting down enjoying good company with people having a laugh not sitting there wondering uh okay what what do i do next and am i all of a sudden you pick up the wrong thing and everyone stares at you no that's when i break out the assault rifle <laughs> well, that would get blood on the fine linens. It's exactly it's even that would be considered a faux pas, as I'm pumping round after round into them as they're pointing at me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, hello to Awaken Mind, and thank you for the super chat donation that you gave. We had a couple super chat donations. All super chat skeptic. goes to McDonald's this time around. No, not at all. Yep, that's Whatever. a twenty-piece McNugget right there. <laughs> no, mm. thank you. That's good eating. Oh gosh. Um, cynical skeptic gives ten dollars and says for a cat toy. Thanks for all you do. Oh, cats will appreciate it. Mark could be a Russian spy. That's what, what that's news. <laughs> that's what people say. By the way, my voice is like um, getting, you know, like <clears throat> I need to clear my voice. Weird. I don't know if you've noticed that it's happened twice. Cracking In water. No, it's just cracking weirdly. I don't know why. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you want to lean on me in that regard. Yeah, no, we're both falling apart. The astral thief said, my sister-in-law looked into Antarctica tours, WTF. Um, people are asking about the New Zealand shooting and all of that in the live chat. Sub Johnny is here doing that. I don't really have a comment on it, honestly. And, and I watched I have it. one comment. And this is a comment because I don't want to have a problem with my channel. Right. Um that if all the videos of the event have been scrubbed for the from the internet, right, and if you're not allowed to have any of those videos or put right. them on a YouTube channel or show them anywhere, even possessing one in any way can get you put in jail, then something's being hidden. End of speech. That and it's 2019, hashtag everything offends everybody. So the, there's a new set of rules in place, which is you can't, you just, you, they're not going to allow you to have it anymore. I thought it was interesting, though, not only did they scrub it from YouTube, but they scrubbed it from Dropbox. Hmm. So when people were sharing it with each other, you they they had it tagged the size, you know, there's an identifier on these things. And they, they were pulling them from Dropbox. I thought that was interesting. Um, let's see. And I'm going down there. In fact, we're both going down there. We should talk about that eventually. Oh, yeah. Well, you start. Uh, so the next time you and I are going to see each other uh, will probably be at the end of next month, which is the New Zealand conference. 
I'm super excited about that. Down in Auckland. So we're going to be landing, I think, at the same time in Auckland, more or less. You'll just glide through customs and I will be probably put on some sort of fly list and sent back. You'll probably be strip searched or so you hope. Oh, don't don't tease me seriously don't tempt you with a good time <laughs> so i'll just I'll, like volunteer it's like him please uh um, then there's the uh right before that the mount shasta flat earth conference that's happening that jonathan shalomar is putting on no no no, no? after oh it's after right after so so after. in sorry you're right mm. no it's all right it's right so in order we have new zealand in april that bleeds into may we have Calgary. And, uh, in the live chat, Robbie Davidson of Celebrate Truth is saying, can't wait to see you all in New Zealand next month. So. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yes. Then Calgary. Uh, Does the Calgary one is in, in the third week of May. Yeah, uh, that a is short, uh, May up 17th, in Alberta. May 18th, Truth Quest Calgary 2019. Yep. And uh, you can go to their Facebook page, uh, Truth Quest Calgary. Or you can go to Eventbrite and just look it up online and look up Truth Quest Calgary and book your tickets. Anyone that's going to be doing documentaries will have to do it during the summer. So June, July, and August, that's basically your window because once it hits September, everything changes. Then you got the UK conference in September, the second week of September. You have the Mount Shasta conference, which is the third week of September. And then Amsterdam, which is the last week of September. Ooh, excited about that one. Yeah. And then there's a four, there's another one I was invited to. I don't, I'm, I'm trying. I am trying to make it. I've, my priority is UK in uh, Stockholm. They contacted me. Oh, it's not wow. even a flat earth conference. And they said, Hey, can you come over? I go, oh, <sighs> it's literally the same cool. time as the UK thing. And I asked the, the, the UK people and they said, you know what? You might be able to do it, you know, cause Stockholm to, to London is very, very quick. And I, so I'm they're they're working out the details. So you guys sort it out. If, if I can pull it off, great, fantastic. So I'd go over, do my thing, come back to UK and then uh, finish up there. Hmm. Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. And then, of course, we round out the year with Dallas, the big, the oh, big American right. conference yes. in Dallas. That one's going to be much easier for me. I mean, Texas is a huge state, but I live in Houston and Dallas is like five hours or something away. I mean, it, you know, it's not a breeze. I'm not just walking next door, but it's different than when you and I are going to be going to, um, I almost said Antarctica. New Zealand. <laughs> going to New Zealand and, and, and back to back. Right. Um, with going to the Mount Shasta one. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of traveling. No, not. Why do you keep thinking Mount Shasta is, is right after New Zealand? Um, I don't know. Maybe something September. in the air. It's, it's September. It's September. Okay. No, no. Mount Shasta, if anything, puts pressure on anyone that's going to do the UK or oh, the okay, Amsterdam conference it because Sorry. it's squeezed in there. But that's, that's, uh, Jonathan Shalimar who's doing right. that one. Exactly. And, and it I should be Carly fun. It's the, it's the first going, one they're going to do. What? Carly Sunshine's also going to the one in Mount Yep. So that'll be good. Uh, but yeah, that'll be... Yeah, it's, there's too many now and I'm getting confused. And it seems like I've always thought I had a good handle on when... Oh, I had to... No, no. I, I thought I was... You did the same thing I did. I'm I thought I was double chart. booked. I told the, Sh the Shasta people, I go, look, I can't do it because the Calgary conference. And then I, because they're literally on the same days, but different months. And I go, oh, wait, no, Calgary's in May. This is September. So I had to write them all down. And I, it's a list that I'm constantly looking at. To, so the next sure. one is Auckland, New Zealand, Saturday, yep. and Sunday, the 27th and 28th. Right. Um, yeah. And then comes Calgary. And I will be, okay, yes, well, not, not comes. too long. So we, yeah, Ugh. like I come back and then I have two weeks. You need a social to... director and it's not going to be me. You'd be a great social director. You need a Lauren Twos of the Love Boat. What was wow. her name on the Love that's Boat? A, that's a good reference. What was her character name? Anybody remember? The cruise director? Yeah, Julie. 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 The cruise director. Love, exciting and new. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the Love Boat was, was the, one of the cheesiest shows ever, and it did really well. I um, watched it a little bit back in the day with my sister. I don't know. We watched some really stupid TV every once in a while. The so. formula of people that go there with different expectations and then some break apart, but they're on a cruise boat. They're not going anywhere. Right. And eventually they find themselves or find, you know, the couples get back together at the end and big happy ending. Hmm. Yeah. Love Boat, Fantasy Island. You know, Fantasy Island, that's an interesting one. Fantasy Island, I always thought, I mean, if I were the writer of Fantasy Island, you could make some really dark 
Fantasy. Oh, did you see freaking well Rourke towards the end? He had he was a warlock by the time you got to the oh, end. He yeah. actually had he actually had powers. Yeah. By the end. Well, that's when they those sorts of shows always toward the end they're trying to regain their continue having their audience and they basically quote jump the shark. Jump the shark, yeah. <laughs> exactly. and Tattoo was his little imp. Funny. Yeah. Ah, everyone's talking about that. Those were the days. I remember Bionic Woman. Remember the Bionic Woman? With Lindsay Wagner, Canadian. Lindsay Wagner, yes. And uh, of course- She still looks great, by the way. Six million dollar man. And then they got together. But then she had the accident before she became the Bionic Woman, which wiped her mind. She lost her memory that she was in love with Lee Majors. Right. And the whole part of it was the undercurrent of the adventures that they do and the way they were saving the world was that they actually were in love. But- she can't remember that she loved him, so there was that underlying aspect. Yeah. Oh no, you, you're you're preaching the choir there. I mean, had um, I had the toys, including Bionic Bigfoot. Wait, there was a Bionic Bigfoot. That's what? Jump the where shark did material. when did you stop watching that show? Are you kidding? It got really cool after a while, and Bionic Bigfoot was actually made by aliens. Okay, wait. Are you just making things up? No, now? I am not making this up. <laughs> I am not making. Just look it up yourself. Anyone, come vouch for me, guys. Bionic. Why Bigfoot tell. was told he was a robot. Bigfoot was a robot. Okay, Bionic. <laughs> Bigfoot was a was a hairy robot that was built by an alien, an advanced alien race. That is crazy. Yeah, and he and Steve Austin squared off against each other in apparently the California forest because you know that's back when everything was shot in the California forest. Well, I just looked. Never any rain. I'm on eBay right now. Bionic Bigfoot. 1977 Kenner six million dollar man bionic Bigfoot 100% vintage figure pre-owned used five hundred dollars and there's several at varying prices yeah whoa this is what it looks like everyone Are yep you, can you see that yep I remember that thing <laughs> I think I had dated a chess that piece, thing. it had a chess piece that popped out I dated and... that thing once. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. But I'm big for, but it was but again, and that was back when people didn't know anything about aliens. So it was really it was surreal. You know, uh, Lee Majors had to deal with, well, I'm sorry, Steve Austin had to deal with these aliens that made this thing. It's really cool. <laughs> Lewis T in the live chat says, "Bigfoot was cool. The chest opened." Yeah, you the know, chest opened up. The the toys that we had when we were <clears throat> young. I mean, got to admit some of them were pretty cool. What about oh, yeah. GI Joe with a kung fu grip? My brother had that. And we actually played with them because there was nothing else to do. Right. That was well, that was the whole play. thing. The, the, that yeah. was, you know, build tree forts and stuff. Um, you we'll played play because Barbies outside, my sister television and I that. wasn't that advanced. There was three channels and it shut off at night. I mean, the whole premise of Poltergeist, the movie, was that, that the station shut down at freaking midnight, most of the places where you were. And so kids had to do something during the day. What are you going to do? You're not going to watch soap operas. Boring. Soap operas right. are so boring. You know, I misspoke when I said I played with Barbies outside with my sister. Not really. You played with Barbies? No. No, no. No, I, really. I don't see it. No, no. Okay, my mother didn't want my sister and I, my sister's two years younger than me, to play yeah. with Barbies because they were very, you know, big boobs and sexy. And she didn't want us to have Barbies, but she did buy us several of the Barbie dream houses, uh, you know, the fold out little play Shocking. areas, the cars and stuff. But we had to have the dolls that were the less sexualized ones. Skipper is one of them and there's another one. So, but we had neighbors that would play with us and they would bring their glamorous, gorgeous, you know, Barbies with their, you know, killer figures. And, but my mom wouldn't let us have those. So Really? Because she yeah. thought it, it, even though you are a walking version of this. <laughs> well, we weren't allowed to because she thought it would give us a bad idea of what a woman's supposed to be physically. Right. Glad that didn't work on you. <laughs> wow. And so Seriously. Said, what, talk about a backfire. <laughs> oh, my God. Seriously. Well, you yeah. know what? That may have been, may have, you wanted it even more then. Well, in a way, it's true. Gregory May is saying something true, that Barbie is all races and all shapes now. That is true. Well, yeah. Right. I know. But- Whatever, whatever. I, you know, if I were young, excuse me, that would be that's a whole other question. If I were young, if I had young children, girls, right. um, would I let them have Barbie? You know, the traditional glamour Barbie, I guess, probably because it is kind of true. If you prevent your children from doing things, and I'm not talking about murdering or, or drugs or that, 
stealing. Right. I'm talking about if you prevent them from having certain types of toys, they may develop a secret desire to have those toys. And so that murder may... and drugs, that's okay. You realize that you <laughs> no, phrased no. that, right? <laughs> that's not what I meant. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying. Like I do. I say, do. Don't give your children toy knives or toy guns because then they'll grow up and they'll be vicious and violent. Don't give your girls Barbies because then they'll be interested in presenting a very sexual image to the public. Um, you know, I, you can expose your children to lots of things, including flat earth. They're not going to go bad unless your parenting skills in all sorts of areas are bad. Um, and not, by the way, that flat earth would make a child bad See, in any way. I always thought the Barbie thing was because the, the parents wouldn't do it because the, not because of the sexualization of a woman, but because it's like, look, you're not going to look like that. You know, the unrealistic expectation. Well, I think giving children aspirational figures, people to look up to is a great idea, not a plastic doll. But then when you look at all the people that that have been put in our faces as heroes, right. we find they all have feet of clay, or some of them are completely and utterly false to begin with. I mean, look at some of the people that are the modern day proponents of the globe lie. Right. And people supposedly respect these fools. Hmm. So Good point. be careful who you tell your children to follow and believe in because it can turn into worship and once those children tie that feeling to those people like bill nye the science guy right it's very hard to pry them away from that system of lies yeah yeah i was thinking of actually getting a, a red hat next for next show uh with um make america great again but i can't figure out why i want to do this <laughs> the only thing you really need to give your children is love and red hats and understanding that's it or your cats in my case and a and a laminated card with the miranda rights on it <laughs> and hide all the cutlery because they might sell it <laughs> <laughs> for for <laughs> to buy candy for opioid addiction <laughs> probably issues Oh, seriously that's like a thing now i mean i cannot even remotely relate to what the hell's going on well, you and I don't have children, so we're a bit out of touch when it comes to what a bit out of touch, and yeah. parents have to deal with today. Yeah, I couldn't do it. And with the it. internet, you're away at work and your child comes home. And, you know, back when my mother would be, my mother went to get a master's degree when I was in high school. And we'd come home from school, my sister and brother and I, and we'd have the house to ourselves. We had a key. And what did we do? I mean, we'd eat more cookies than we were really allowed to, uh, watch TV, which we weren't supposed to watch. But the amount of channels that were on, that were uh, that were viewable, were, wasn't as great as they are today. We didn't have the internet, so you know nobody was looking up porn. Right. Um, what was on the TV itself, nothing was too crazy. I mean, I don't even think. I mean, at that time, there wasn't even Cinemax. No. So when was... left alone, there was really no danger of us doing anything except doing a right. science experiment in the kitchen or you know something crazy like that. The tools weren't available to us that we could get in trouble. I mean, depending on where you were, obviously. I mean, right. I, my group, but, but yeah, unless you had, and even then, I mean, you're too young. Like even a liquor cabinet doesn't mean anything to you. You shouldn't when you're that young. We my, we had a bar, a full bar, fully stocked. And my sister and brother and I never went nah. and started drinking because we just never didn't touched care. it. No. I didn't even consider it. That's how naive I was. I, just I didn't did. even be like, eh. One. As an adult, then gradually I would start having a little bit of alcohol. I'm not talking about an adult like in my 40s. I just mean once I was 18 plus. Not because somebody said, don't drink. I just wasn't interested in it. Just like cigarette smoking. My parents smoked back in the day. They quit right. in the 80s. But that's what a lot of parents of children that are now my age, that was smoking was what people did. Sure. I never picked up cigarettes and started smoking. Just not interested. No. Yeah. So, you know, I, so in a way, being a good role model to your children is a great idea. And that's the way I'd go forward. But you've got to remember as a parent, a lot of the things you're modeling to them, they might not do. They might do the exact opposite hmm. for either very good or very bad reasons. Good point. So, um, what what things do you have coming up other than the uh, New Zealand thing? Do you have some little projects slash interviews slash? No, I, I can't think of any right now. Just going to New Zealand, going to the Dallas conference, and going to Amsterdam. That's as far as I know what I'm going to. 
Got it. I don't even have another interview scheduled for this week. I did one. On really? Which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, you will. Yeah. I just haven't, you know, there's a couple of people I do want to talk to. And if anybody's got an idea of somebody that you think would make a good interview subject, please message me at Miss Steer. It's M-I-S-S-S-T-E-E-R-E at gmail.com. If, if it's you, send me your name and, you know, why you'd be, why'd you want, why would you want to be on a show? Or if it's somebody that you know. There are a couple of names I've jotted down. Wes Blaze, Chad Taylor, who I met at Question Everything, Nathan Reynolds as well. So those are some people I do want to talk to and I haven't contacted them yet. I'm going to be doing that soon. I haven't watched the video yet, but I heard that the Salt and Sea experiment a couple days ago went well. Yeah, I saw Thrive and Survive was doing videos and... Yeah. Well, see, the thing about the Salton Sea, it's the worst place ever to do an experiment. I know. They keep going Fish. back. Masochists. Well, I know why they're going back. And I know. It's not because they like to walk on the, the skeletal remains of dead fish or smell the stench of their rotted corpses. Um, oh, that's what does it for me. Yeah. Well, I don't know why anyone else does it. But... Make it into a cologne. Oh, the salt and sea. No, I think I think every time someone watches the National Geographic special, they just angers them so much. <laughs> it's like you, and, another angel loses its wings. <laughs> oh, that you. So we go back and and yeah, that's why you go back because you want to like set it straight. Right. I get it. I get yeah. it. It's just I just wish it were in a beautiful place like Bali for all concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Not Bali. there. Not there. And and I I know they get criticized like why don't you do it next to the ocean? It's like well because you need a standing a contained body of water, and it's this is the only one that's outside of Los Angeles of any length, and it was supposed to be you know this wonderful beautiful resort area by now, but the lake died, and so now it's just this awful place. But that there are fish that still live there, and I think they have. Oh, you don't want to eat them. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, and which was weird. Yeah, we were down there, and there's fishermen on the beach fishing for these things. It's like you're not Hi. eating that, are you? Not hungry? I'll buy you a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they're just fishing for the sport of it. But come on, yeah, I guess nature seems to not us, but nature seems to thrive in just about anything. That is true. That is very true. And you know, even on Mars, we've seen pictures of little gophers. <laughs> right. I mean, the real Mars. I'm talking about fake ones that they put out and try to tell us that they had a rover there had a rover but now it's just a frozen heap of junk in our minds not in reality right anyway i don't know i can't think of anything else i've got to talk about what about you um some things i will let you guys know in advance what i'm going to try to record certain things i you know because i've been doing a lot of stuff recently uh, I'm doing KM MOX radio on Monday. It's a late one, but I think I can record it. I'm doing, 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 I'm doing Vita Guerra radio, uh, G U E R R A. She was not a fashion model. What's the other kind? The, I don't want to say the sluttier version because oh, there's like glamour models. That's it's not, glamour. it's not glamour. There's another term for it. The ones that usually pose in beer commercials and oh oh yeah uh, um pr girls maybe. yeah maybe anyway yeah. she so i'm i'm uh doing a thing with her on the 27th i'm meeting with another high school group who's shooting their own little documentary on the 30th uh and then a couple more podcasts after that in fact i think you and i are doing another podcast together in may oh, um sign me up i think you already signed up oh <laughs> Good. But that's okay. We'll we'll work out the details on that. And when is the new Mark Sargent doll by Mattel coming out? <laughs> With a flexible grip to hold a snow globe or even a frisbee. Uh, you know, I am, I am Mark Sargent shirt. It comes with a free shirt in a in a child size as well. You know, I joke about uh, a lot <laughs> about how cute. I endorse this product and or event. Collect you know, them, what... trade them, or behead them. It's up to you. But yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. No, there's not going to be a Mark Sargent doll. Oh my god, it'd be horrifying. Uh, <laughs> one, there would be DreamWorks licensing issues again. You know, with the whole Shrek thing. Uh, no, I, I think that'd be I think it'd be awful. Wait, Vita Guerra was a film model? No, film film model. Film model? Oh, FHM FHM model. model. Oh, what does FHM stand for? It's like a men's magazine that I don't know. Like Don't porn, throw the TLAs. Really. No idea. Um, 
page 42 is in the live chat talking about the Mark Sargent doll. And we could, oh, we could get those fake glasses, those pla black glasses with no lenses in them. That would be good. No. We could get the glow, the globe microphone that you had, the glowing hat. You could buy lots of accessories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's just start licensing everything. And the, the Mark awesome. Sargent doll is sold in every state in several different countries, except not sold in Denver, Colorado for some weird reason. <laughs> what? All right. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. There's two other things. Uh, real quick, real quick. Because, uh, you know, I'm on top of it, even though I feel like I'm dying. Uh, tomorrow is going to be released our podcast with you and me and Luther. Oh, good. That'll be a wonderful one. From Calvary University. That was a good interview. I hope it comes out. Yeah, yeah. It comes. He's going to stream it. He's going to premiere it tomorrow, and then I will mirror it, and I'll, I'll send it to you, but that premieres tomorrow. Great. And then we still... Oh, well, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you remember the interview that you were at uh, the... at What's-His-Faces? Uh, Jesse's place down in Los Angeles at Bond Studios. Oh, true. Still haven't seen that yet. It's interesting. Oh, and I'm sorry. Last thing, it, you know what? I don't want to gloss over this because this is something that's coming up. And look, it's not going away anytime soon. As you know, we're in a war with mainstream science, and they are going to make moves. The filters thing is not a joke. I, oh I know you've heard of the filters thing. The filters thing. I really want to talk about the filters thing, but I want to add one more little bit of humor before we get into something more uh, okay. serious. In the live chat, it was suggested by Ace McLeod that the Mark Sargent Mattel doll, like a Ken doll, would have a removable appendix. And that's a way back joke. That's a for way those back joke. Who have been involved in this for a very long right. time. Right. I, I, I was the closest I think I've ever been to death was, <laughs> was that because I was so stubborn that when it ruptured, I was like, nope, can't be. Right. Not the, but I didn't know what it was. Man, I never felt pain like that ever in my life to where the doctor was poking me, going, because. You know, like uh, he's a Chinese doctor, yes. wondering why I was still alive. And I said, I don't know. If your appendix explodes, you can die. It's a fact. You can die. But I think we need that organ, and it's a vital part of our bodies. And the fact that they do get infections and go bad is really sad. And I wish there was some way we could make that not happen. One last thing, and then we're going to get into what we're going to talk about was is the filters on YouTube, which is a crazy story. DITRH put a link in the channel to a new cha channel that's out called Guy Flat. It's the word guy and then the guy word flat, flat run together, Guy Flat. Guy. Uh, short videos that are great. There are only three so far. So DITRH is encouraging everyone to go subscribe, comment, and share to the channel Guy Flat. That's G U I with a capital G, then F L A T with a capital F, but run together as one word. Okay, so the filters. Filters. What is going on? Okay, so about a week ago, maybe a little longer, as you know, I go into YouTube and every single day I type in Flat Earth probably 100 times a day at least. And I set the filter. I used to set it to by month and then I set it to uh, by week and then I just started doing it by. Once you're caught up, I set it to today, right? Mm -hmm. And usually I mean, it changes everything because you know the videos that are, are there when you type them in have millions of hits they're the top videos that have been out there for for some time some four months uh some two years they've been there a long time and when you sit, set the filter they all change to the most recent they don't have a lot of hits they're smaller channels that doesn't happen anymore now it stays with the stop the top channels it stays with the million hit videos it the filters aren't working and I not only not only the dates, but by upload date, by view count, by rating, it doesn't change. Now I well, read I've read it. I've only tested it in um, Microsoft Edge and I've, Internet Explorer. I've talked, used it on my iPhone. I've tried doing it on my MacBook Pro. Nothing. It but seems it's, to it's, have spread to everywhere. Safari, and and Firefox. Letters. The filters are down for you know. It's down for videos. just about everything. However, I have seen them playing with other things. Like for example, I went in and typed in oil change. Well, like you type in 9-11 conspiracy and it absolutely will not, it, the filters don't work. You type in oil change, or at least it did a couple days ago, and they did change. And I typed in potato salad because, you know, that's what I type in. And that changed. That that worked for the filters. But then they broke them all again. 
it was like they were they're they're playing around in the background trying to figure out and again this is an, a nerd argument which is how can we sup- curb the enthusiasm of flat earth without hurting everybody and they haven't figured out how to do this yet but right now yeah the filters are not working it's so- really bad because it's it's worse than it's just horrible, especially it, for new people coming into it. That's the biggest they, problem. That's it, why that, they've done this. If Unless you are it's a, just an accident and they're going no. to fix it. So yeah. you really think that YouTube has done this to every, generally every other makeup videos and you know all these other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's a, just it's to a, get us? To, yeah, yeah, to get to us. No different than the scoreboard. I mean, people thought it was crazy when I said, look, the scoreboard is gone. Relevant search results equals a number is now gone forever because we were the only ones that was look that were looking at it. We were looking at it more than anybody. And doing this, killing the search result or killing the um, the filters, what it does is what you were just said, which is it hurt, who it hurts the most is new channels. If you're a new channel trying to get into flat earth, oh, you got it tough road ahead of you now because nobody because you can't filter to you can't burrow down far far enough to see your channel so now if you're a new channel you're going to have to go to the bigger channels and say hey can you promote help me promote my thing or you know help me you have to be word of mouth Mm. until they fix it so i don't know when they're going to fix it there's been no what's interesting is there's also no news on this i haven't seen any news on the filters in broken in YouTube. It's like I that should be a big looked deal. On YouTube for people making videos about the search search is not being possible anymore on YouTube and I haven't seen any videos on it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm 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 a little concerned at the same time as you know, you and I've been doing this for a while. There's so much content content out there. It's not affecting existing content, but the new stuff, yeah. I mean, even you and I when we put out you and well time will tell because you know when we put out new videos other than the subscribers that already subscribe and get alert messages and word of mouth yes will there be new people running into it exactly and that's the thing now nicole cote in the live chat says the filter is not because of flat earth it's because of what the live stream mosque shooting situation happened. no no, no it was, be- it was, it was be- before that it was before that yeah it's uh i know this is no this is no although the mosque shooting is a, is a wonderful way to tie it in uh no this was this was something else uh the the youtube uh, it's not tough for them they blocked everything regarding that musk thing and same thing with facebook well here's how we can independently fight back on a small level even you know in my chat and i'm not a super popular channel right. um, but i guess i'm continuing to grow since 2015 we could subscribe to each other in the live chat i know right. that sounds nuts but i think it's a good idea subscribe yeah. to each other so that way you'll be alerted maybe if somebody puts a video out yeah. um so and keep that's keep what i suggest keep on the lookout for new channels that because yes. uh, i'm i'm hoping they fix this soon i mean you can't come on we're talking about all the filters in youtube they and it's bad they can't, they can't keep this up forever and the guy flat uh, channel that ditrh alerted us to in the live chat a little while ago um i was mistaken it's just guy flat all run together as one word but that channel they would be like drowning in a sea of videos without David Weiss bringing it to our attention. So, you know, I saw Bob from Globusters subscribed. I just subscribed. Some of us in the live chat subscribed. How would they ever get known? And that's right. what this could be about. Um, we don't know, but yeah. there, I don't know. I say that if they wanted Flat Earth off the internet, we'd be gone. Yeah. It's a gist uh, yeah, yeah, you it's can't forget that. Code it's code in a computer. Which is why I've I've said several times, like, look, if they wanted to crush us, they could. Now curbing our enthusiasm, slowing us down a bit. That's right. a whole nother thing. You can do that. And that's appears what they have done three or four times in the past. This one is the most radical though, because it's like it's like you're affecting. I mean, the scoreboard, that's one thing, but this is functionality. It's yeah, it makes YouTube not a very easy way to look up new content on any topic whatsoever. Right. But it would encourage subscription if you could find the channel, that is. Right. And will it affect, by the way, let's let's end it kind of with this. Uh, will it affect Logan Paul's piece when he finally releases it? Well, that's cool. Will it climb the ranks or will it not show up in the ranks? His promo uh, trailer for the um, documentary that he's dropping today, March 20th, 2019 in an hour or so from now or something like that right. or less 
um, didn't get as many hits on it as I would expect. So and I'm and and I'm I'm you know I'm scrolling through it. He's in the top. That particular trailer is in the top twenty. Mm -hmm. So yeah, his thing should make it up the charts. Mm -hmm. So for well, for one good of or the bad. reasons that I started this channel. Well, the number one reason I started this channel back in 2015 was I after I determined for myself that we don't live on a globe, I wanted to get in on this. There weren't that many, many channels really back then. I wanted to help. I wanted to throw my hat in the ring, as they say, to see what I could do. And then when my channel started growing, well, let me go back on that. The reason I decided to do that is because I couldn't just sit idly by and watch this huge lie continue to be foisted on the public. I wanted to try and help wake people up. And I knew I wasn't an experimenter and I knew I wasn't somebody that was great with, you know, doing graphics on a, on a video. Sure. What could I do? So, you know, radio background, talking to people, I figured I could do that. And I had questions. I had personal questions. I wanted to ask these video makers whose videos helped me come to my conclusion about flat earth. And so I wanted to ask them like, how did you break it to your family? What does your family think? Uh, do you do you still date? What is your wife or husband? I wanted to ask these questions and find out about the people behind Flat Earth. Then when my platform grew a little, I thought I can also use this platform to help smaller channels than mine expose themselves to the greater Flat Earth public. And indeed, right. I've achieved those two things. But right, right now, what we've got is the, you can't even search and find smaller channels anymore, really. So... We need each other now more than ever before to subscribe to each other so we get those notification bells and so we can share those videos on our social media. And I encourage everyone to do that now. Agreed. Can well said. It? Well done. <laughs> All right. Until we meet again. Now, tomorrow, saying that, you know, Logan Paul is coming out with this, with this documentary. If indeed, that's the case. Uh, Celebrate Truth, Robbie Davidson is going to come on with me at about 6 p.m. Eastern, and we're going to kind of review the documentary and see what we thought. Cool. So be looking for cool. that tomorrow, if indeed the Logan Paul vid drops today. I want to say hello to Zulu1, who's in the live chat too, who I hadn't said hello to earlier, and Purple Fawns. Purple Fawns says, we need to send multiple weather balloons up into space, perhaps. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Colin Turner for two pounds in the super chats. And thanks to everybody who's been here during the show. Please give the video a thumbs up and indeed share it on social media and subscribe if you haven't. Because like I said, not just to try to get myself more subscribers, which of course I'd want, right? Who wouldn't? You'd right. be lying if you're saying you don't want subscribers. It's going to get the message out. And I plan on having more people who don't have that many subscribers on my channel to try right. to get their message out to a larger line. Um, hey to kill the bank who just came in. Anyway, that is it. See everybody later, maybe tomorrow. We celebrate truth on the 21st of March, 2019. Thank you, Mark, and I hope you feel better. I'm certainly going to try. Gargling with hot salt water, one of those cures my mother truly believed in and i still do it to this day that could help all right all right don't tuck into a fifth of gin whatever you do right <laughs> all right everyone see you later and until we meet again keep it flat hail hydra george clooney go power coin